In an earlier session, we looked at classifying a company's costs between direct costs and indirect costs. And if you recall, we said that direct costs are those costs that can be easily traced to the production of one unit of our output, whereas our indirect costs are the costs which cannot be easily traced to the production of one unit of our output. So our indirect costs, for example, might be our head office administration costs. It might be the power cost for our factory. It's very difficult for us to calculate how much we spend on each of our indirect costs in the production of one unit of our product. And a reminder of our terminology then, the sum of our indirect costs is equal to our overhead costs. So we'll just note that down. What are overheads? It is the sum of the indirect costs. And we're going to be looking at these indirect or overhead costs in some detail throughout this topic on absorption costing. Specifically, we are going to be focusing on our production overhead costs. Remember, another classification we made in relation to costs was dividing them between production and non-production costs. Our production costs are the costs we must incur in order to produce our product. So in a manufacturing company, the production costs will be the costs associated with the factory environment. So our production costs might include, for example, power for the factory, or perhaps our factory supervisor wages. These are our production overheads. So the costs incurred in our factory environment, the production costs, that cannot be linked directly back to the production of one unit of our output. Just a quick reminder then on what non-production costs would be. These would be the costs incurred in order to run the business effectively, but we do not have to incur them just to produce our product. So it might be head office rent or our sales staff salaries. Now, as I've said, in this chapter, we are going to be focusing on our production overhead costs. And what we are really doing in an absorption costing system is finding some way to calculate the full production cost per unit. And the reason we want to do this is because it's very important for all companies to have some idea of how much it costs them to produce each unit of their product. An obvious reason for this is that we need to know how, mu how much it costs to produce our unit so that we can calculate what our selling price is going to be. So how much are we going to charge our customers for this product? In absorption costing, we will get to the point where we have calculated our production cost per unit. What we're going to look at next is a bit of a flow diagram for the absorption costing process, and we can refer back to this at each step so that we always understand where we are at each point and what our final aim is. Okay, so here we have our absorption costing diagram. And note, at the bottom of the diagram we see our aim is to calculate the full production cost per unit. Now the full production cost of each unit of output is going to be made up of the direct cost per unit plus the production overhead per unit. If we know each of these two things, then we are able to calculate our total production cost per unit.
So let's have a look at these two different components. Well, our direct costs are the costs we can trace directly to each unit of our output. So for example, in a, if we are a company that produces and sells tables, then our direct costs for each table would be our direct materials, so perhaps the wood used to make the tables, and we'll, it will also include our direct labour, so our production line workers' salaries, the people who actually assemble the tables. So our direct production costs are likely to include direct materials and direct labour. Now by definition, we should know how much we spend on each of these components per unit of output. So we can allocate those costs directly to the cost unit. And that should be a reasonably straightforward process. The other component of our production cost per unit is the indirect production costs, or our production overheads. Now here's where things get a little bit more complicated. We've said that by definition we cannot link these costs directly to each unit of output. So instead we just follow a number of steps which help us make a reasonable estimate of what our production overhead cost per unit is. There are four steps. We're going to go through each one in detail and what the calculations are involved in each one. But just to give us a broad overview of what we're going to do, we can have a look. We see that our first two steps are allocation and apportionment. So what we do is we start at the top with our total production overhead cost for our factory. And in our first two steps, all we are doing is finding some fair way of dividing those costs across each of our cost centres. So we have our production cost centres and our service cost centres. Now we'll see in later sessions, once we get to this point, we do have to move the costs a little bit between the service cost centres and the production cost centres, and that will be our step three reapportionment. After we've gotten to that point, we're going to find some way to absorb our overheads into our cost unit. Or in other words, calculate our production overhead cost per unit.